Now it's the middle of May. Just said I'd do a little video on some of the wildflowers that are near our lake here. Um, closest one to me at this point in time now is actually the ordinary buttercup. This is Ranunculus repens, which means creeping, creeping buttercup. So there's common as you can get really. But, uh, interestingly beside us is the little tree foil. Oh, this one here and um, this gets little yellowy kind of flowers later on in the summer and he just creeps and this is poor ground here it was all clay that was dug out from the ground for the um for the lake to be put in but, uh, one of the most interesting things here at the minute is this fella here it's actually a uh, peppermint so it is so and just having a, a sniff there now and it really is strong peppermint flavor and uh, the victorians used to love this um apparently it was because the Fowl odors in London and that, so they used to have little uh, oils made out of these, and they um, they were actually farmed quite ex extensively, actually, for quite a while there. Um, so that's interesting that this is a native and can be used for peppermint tea. Um, this little guy here is actually a wetland form of goosegrass or cleavers, um, fairly common in gardens, but this one is more unusual. Uh, because it's a, a wetland version of it and we have another interesting one here which is just a little bit of uh, watergrass so it is so all within a few inches of each other there's a, a few interesting guys the thistle a little bit out of his normal habitat here because it's kind of wettish here right beside the water see the thistles are usually more in dry ground Uh, another plant of the dry poor soils usually, so this is the oxide daisy, a lucantimum, and um, they see themselves so can imagine here where this stump has been artistically placed. Um, these little guys have found a foothold and they've slowly crept out. So one the first year and now they're multiplying along nicely. Um, now over here is another interesting one. Because it's a seasonal plant and not too common nowadays. This one here is the cuckoo flower. So he is a member of the watercress family as well and the sturgeon family. And um, he really only flowers in May and a quite an insignificant little leaf. You don't normally notice them until the flowers pop up. And yeah, at one time these were common enough in, in kind of damp meadowland really, but nearly extinct in most farmlands nowadays anyway, so it is. So it's only in a kind of place like this where you can see millions and millions of buttercups all enjoying the moisture and the light that um, you'd like to get these fellas to thrive. So you can see millions of flowers all ready for our bees. And uh, so this is the creeping buttercup here, and just thought you might be interested to see the king buttercup. So this fellow is called the king, naturally enough, because he's much bigger. So he has this leaf here. Can you see this lovely lacy kind of leaf? So that's how you kind of distinguish it from the from the more irregular buttercup leaf. And he's a way taller. He's at least three times taller. Uh, flowers are about the same. So yeah. Here, uh, roughly about an inch across, but um, way more extensive looking and a lot more handsome actually. There he is. Yeah, so you can see where there was a little bit of ground built up near the lake here when we did it first. But it's been very interesting seeing clover and things like this creeping in and getting a foothold, even the ordinary dock leaves. They're all good for nature, really. And uh, we had a few, what we classed as weed trees, really, the willows. But I quite like them, They're good for wildlife. And I may use some of the stems because these are lovely, the finger thickness now. And uh, another one here. So I may use some of these stems for doing some wigwams for um, climbing sweet peas and maybe peas and things like this. So they could be used. Because in between we have oak trees and alder trees here. 
and overhead we have a big massive sycamore. He's not a native, but I think any tree is better than no tree. So sycamores are naturalized now in Ireland anyway, and they're after blending in with our own wildlife and trees. So I don't see any harm in them. This is the Aldi here, or Alnus glutinosa. It's got a distinctive little oval shaped leaf. Um, and they look right ground here, so that's why they're absolutely flying it here. These, these trees are only three years old and they're already around nine feet high. Whereas the little oaks here are a little bit slower to take up. And it's absolutely fabulous growth there now, they're really rocketing. So oaks actually most people associate them with good ground, but they're quite happy in fairly moist ground as well. And they can get fairly big, so these will be the kings in time to come. And all those sallies and things will have died at that stage, they'll be shaded out in time to come. So, we have another native tree here then, which is Scots Pine. I put bamboos beside the trees to mark them, because they can easily get lost in all the foliage during the summer. So I come along and I flatten down any weeds to keep them. But that's all this year's new growth, which is, oh, I suppose it's nearly already a foot. And by the time that expands properly and the leaves open out, he's going to be, after growing about two foot this year, I'd say. Another member of the buttercup family. And this one is one that actually lives in the water. See if I can reach him without falling in. And so that's him there. And it's quite, I think it's attractive actually. It's got a nice shiny leaf, big heavy stems, and quite a nice flower. No issue with that at all with me. And considering that these things weren't introduced here, like the, I never planted them, uh, the mint or this ranunculus and things like that. Things have actually colonized, they've moved in. I guess some of the seeds must have been in the ground already. There was no standing water here, but interesting enough, things like this little, I think they call it a water hawthorn, but I could be wrong. It's a type of, it's not really a lily, but it's a similar plant that takes up the same niche in our native waterways and that, and it flowers. Uh, quite nice, this one. Interesting enough anyway, so it is. And another native then over beyond here is our bog irises. So I might nip over to them to show you. There's another one on the way over here. Let's stroll over. So what we do here is we have this footpath that's been mowed in into the normal, what was the normal vegetation here. And uh, it's just easy for us so we don't get wet feet when we're rambling around. We have a few non-natives just to make things look nice. I'm very interested in the, in the wildlife. Uh, this one is a good one. So this clover here is nearly as good as the plant you buy in the garden centre really. You look at all the colour that's in that. It's bigger than my thumb. Large, large flowers. Great for bumblebees. They have long tongues that can actually reach down to the bottom of the the, uh, the flowers. And this one here is better for honeybees. That's the white clover. And they have a shorter flower. So this individual little tiny flower, just where my fingertip is, is um, it's perfect for honeybees to reach in. So they lap that up. The bumblebees do the big pink ones. And each plant and insect has its own niche. Now this little interesting fella here is uh, called Herb Robert, or Geranium Purpureum. Not a native. Quite interesting actually because it's got this lovely purple tint to the leaves so even though it's only among leaves and grass and stuff here it looks like I've planted it really. So, yeah, I'll bring you over to the irises. So this would be worth having a close up of. See the, how delicate all the different structures are. And the bees nip in there. See the pollen at the back of the flower there, the little brownish looking thing. That's where the pollen is, so he rubs his pollen along the bee's back. And the bee doesn't even notice, he gets his nectar, flies into the next flower and pollinates. Hopefully a different plant. Bumblebee might fly 
Cast the pan dough is there and pan that one so that's how we get genetic diversity. And the pollen will be ready at a different time to the, to the female part of the flower so that the uh, flower can pollinate itself. So we can't get around these things. So, hope you enjoyed watching the video anyway. Thanks for watching. Thank you.